So what in the world is a small that sells? So for those of you that are new to the channel, we consider a small item something that is easy to make with high profit and low cost. And how do we know that this item will sell? Well, we look at the trending items from the big box stores and we can see that they're selling. And that's all that we have to do is put our twist to it and do the same. So why do I call certain items a small, even when it may be a little bit larger of a build? Well, what I'm talking about is the super easy items that make that have such a high profit margin that you can charge a lower price for it and move multiples. So to me, woodworking builds are going to fall into two different categories. You're going to have your larger, more custom pieces that someone will actually need. They actually have a place for this and they're looking for this one particular item. And then you're going to have your smalls. And it may be something that they didn't know that they needed until you sold it to them. And throughout the history of marketing and sales, that's where the money's at. If you go into a big box store looking for particular items, what do you see on your way out? whenever you're paying at the cash register. A bunch of smaller, cheaper items that can pretty much fit anyone's budget. And those items are placed there for a reason. So for the smaller items, we're doing the exact same thing. Now again, I'm not saying just build small items, but these items are great sources of revenue while you're waiting for some of your larger items to sell or while you're building some custom items. So let's hit on some of these small and medium sized items that the big box stores are pumping out like crazy. So while I was doing the research for this, this first one stopped me in my tracks. So check this out. These are hanging cutting boards. And we know that cutting boards have been hot for a long time. They have been trending for a long time, but they have been overmade, oversold. And in order to sell a normal cutting board, people have sliced their profit margins down so thin that really they're not making any money unless you can do something like this. And we've talked about it before. If you can take a weakening hot or trending item and make it into something that is different and multifunctional, then you're opening up a whole new set of customers. Because even people that already have cutting boards, they would want something like this. I have cutting boards and I would want something like this. But the one thing that I wouldn't want is to spend $140 on this because it's only half of an inch thick. Okay, so what caught my eye and made me stop scrolling was its shape and functionality. So this is a great piece of wall decor. It's almost like a piece of art in itself and it's useful. So let's break this down real quick. I've already said that this material is already a half of an inch thick and the diameter of this circle is 22 inches. Now I'm sure to pump these out, all of this is done on CNC machines, but this will be super easy for anyone to do. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is to glue up two 22 by 22 squares. And if you're asking why two, I'll get to that here in a minute. So once your squares are dry, we're going to cut this into a perfect circle. There's a ton of good videos out there on how to cut perfect circles using a router, using a jigsaw, and some people even do it with a table saw. But regardless of how you decide to cut your circle, the next step is to draw a horizontal straight line right through the center of both of your pieces. Then you'll use that straight line as a guide to separate your top piece from your cutting board pieces. If you notice that the top board, the little scallops that come down to actually hold the cutting boards into place, they all fall right at the midline of this circle. So with our line down the center, we need to break this down into three different sections because there's three different cutting boards. So since this is 22 inches wide, that's going to divide out into 7.3 something or other. So it's really not going to matter as long as the two outsides are matching. So let's go in seven and three eighths of an inch from each outside edge on our line and make a mark. That mark will be where each one of those cutting boards will be cut straight down to the bottom. And to go ahead and mark that off, just take a framing square, line it up with your straight line and go ahead and draw a line all the way through it at that seven and three eighths that you marked previously. Now that you have the bottom of this broken up into three different square like sections, it's all that you have to do is go to the center of each one of those sections then just draw your handle into place and then back down to your line. And if you notice from the top part, those scallops that were holding in the place, as you make your arches to go up to your handle, you are creating those scallops. Just make sure that whenever you're making the top part of your handle, that the top part with the hole in it is just a little bit wider. And that's what's going to lock everything in. Once all of that is marked out into your board, mark out where you want your cutting board holes. Go ahead and drill those out while this is still in one piece. So now your line that originated in the middle now it has the handles attached to it. And if you wanted to, you could erase a part of that original straight line that you're not going to be cutting. You have two of these rounds already made, and then you have your pattern drawn out on one of these. So the one with the pattern, go ahead and use a jigsaw and only cut out where we started off with, with that center line, and then the shapes of the handles all the way across the circle. Do not separate these into individual cutting boards yet. We just want a top and a bottom piece. Once that is cut out, now you have two separate pieces. Go ahead and sand and clean these up and just make sure everything fits together okay. If everything looks great, now we can move on to our second round. So the reason why I said that you would want two of these is notice the grain of the wood on the top part and then the bottom cutting boards. 
it's going in the opposite direction and that's what helps to give this that unique look because people are looking at it, it's like this is a perfect circle but there's two different grain patterns that intersect well that's all that they have done and make sure to do this before you cut that out i guess i should have mentioned that earlier is on your first round have all of your grain going horizontally and then on your second round rotate it to where the grain is opposite or vertical now you can take your bottom section of your originals lay it right on top of your second round just, just trace that out and go ahead and mark your seven and three eighths on both sides and straight down once that's traced cut your second round just like you did for your first once you have both of those cut out and cleaned up just swap out the two bottom pieces that's going to make the grain of your cutting boards opposite of the grain of the holder now of course you can do this and only make one if you'd like but if you're going through the steps and there's really no additional steps and you can make two at the same time then why not and the only thing left to do is make that final cut separating the cutting boards and you can just do that with a jigsaw up against a straight edge then once you have all of your pieces cut i'm sure that they have just finished this off with some type of a food grade oil and then as far as hanging this on the wall you can just install some little keyhole hangers or some sawtooth hangers regardless i can guarantee you these things will sell because these things are unique and they are awesome and when you put those two combinations together you're going to sell it and if you like the community aspect of woodworking make sure to check out our patreon community it's perfect for questions or if you just needed to bounce some ideas off of somebody if this sounds like something that you're interested in come join me i'll make sure to throw a link in the description and on my website so this next one we're not going to be breaking down i'm just going to show you guys this as an example of what i was talking about by taking something pre-existing making it completely unique and creating something new and beautiful these things are awesome just by looking at this and comparing it to the last one what if they did the exact same thing with these two different designs except just make a decorative square cut the design out of the very center switch the two cutting boards so that this shape and cutting board would actually be highlighted by the contrast just an idea and i think it's a pretty good one but regardless i just wanted to show you all this so take these two different ideas that we have discussed mix them up mash them up and come up with something totally unique okay so this next one is going to be a guaranteed seller there's just something about it that is super unique and as we get closer to the holidays these things are going to sell even better and this build is actually being sold for 57 dollars by target or as we like to call it for their expensive items target so they're actually calling this a rustic village decorative accent whatever that is it's three buildings on a board okay so what makes this unique well for one thing they're using reclaimed material so the building sizes can be a little bit different and you can build these out of pretty much whatever you have laying around so again this will be an excellent pallet wood project and even the ones that they have staged up there's a couple of these that have oak pieces and a lot of it's just made out of pine pieces so this is a super simple build and even if you were building this out of new material you can build it for a few bucks. Actually cut all of the different parts out of this that you would need just out of one half of one two by six. But again, you can use whatever material that you have, but the material that they're using at least for the buildings is an inch and a half thick. So two by fours, two by sixes, whatever. The one thing that I would change if I was building these to sell is I'd make it a little bit bigger. The entire width of this thing is only nine inches wide and they actually leave some room on the ends of these bottom boards. So the widest board that they're using is only four inches so again i would at least make mine about 14 inches wide and use three inch four inch and five inch material maybe my tallest board would be 12 inches instead of the tallest board like they're using only being eight and a quarter of an inch so this whole thing is only like this big but what's so appealing about this is that it actually looks like folk art so something that they would actually use to decorate with a hundred years ago so you can probably figure out how they put all of this together but we already know the different lengths and widths for our boards so the next important thing is going to be the points to each one of these boards and if you notice they are completely off none of them actually match and that is part of this primitive look everything would have just been randomly hand cut back then so do the same you can use a miter saw or you can hand cut it if you'd like but make sure that your angles are offset like these it's just part of the look and then all these little dark windows and doors they didn't just take a magic marker and color those in they did it like this let me show you how i did this one if i were to be making several of these things for the windows i would just take a bolt and grind down each side making a rectangle but since i'm only making this one i'm just going to be using what i have which is a piece of key stock then i'm going to start off with my windows so let's say if i want one here we're gonna hammer this in. We'll put a couple more down by the door. Just wanna make sure that you get a pretty good indention in the material. Now for the door. For the door, you could just use the same punch that you did for the windows and just keep denning it until you have the shape that you want. 
Or you can just find a random piece of steel laying around. Honestly, I have no clue what this was used for. There's a uh, bolt welded onto it. Place it where you want it. Get your fingers out of the way. And instead of hitting steel on steel with a hammer, I'm going to go ahead and put a block of wood on top and give it a whack. So now that we have all of our indentions, now comes the part where they torch it. Now this part's completely up to you. The good thing about using the torch is that it will add color to the rest of the material, or you could just stain this entire piece and get the same look. Because up next, we're going to be sanding it right back off. So whenever you're burning this, you're just going to lightly char everything except for the windows and the doors. And once you have that done, we're just going to lightly sand this off until you get to the color that you want. Because the windows and the door have been dented in, they're going to stay the same dark color. So it's as easy as that to come up with this look and you put your own twist to it, get creative as you want, get as dark as you want. And like I said earlier, you can come up with a similar look with stain. The only difference is going to be is this kind of natural aging look that the charring leaves. Regardless of how you decide to do it, the last step is just going to be to connect it to your bottom board, which I would just put screws in from the bottom. So essentially you can make these things for less than $5 each. Tarjay is selling these for almost 60 bucks. You throw a $40 price tag on something like this, I don't think you're gonna have any issues selling it. And if you enjoy these types of videos, the only way that I know is that if you hit that like button and make sure to subscribe. So for this next one, it's another example of taking something hot, trending, putting a little different twist to it and coming up with a totally new looking product. Check these floating shelves out. So floating shelves are hot and you're seeing them everywhere. So the key to making and selling anything is to not compete with everyone else. And you build something like this, you're not competing with anyone except for the big box store that sells these for $130 for a set of two. With the cost to build these, don't think you're going to have any issues. So each one of these in this set of two are 24 inches long, 8 inches deep, and 3 inches at the widest thickness. So this is 3 quarters of an inch material. If it's 8 inches deep by 24, then the top board of this shelf is just an 8 inch by 24 inch long board. And now this next step is what actually makes this unique, what caught my eyes because I hadn't seen anything like this, and probably why they are trending even at 130 bucks. And that is that they have changed the shape of the shelf instead of just a typical square floating shelf shelf, they have added this triangular dimension to it. And really the only thing that you're going to need to do that is to add a bevel to your bottom board where it meets the top board. But I'm guessing the reason why you're not seeing very many of these out there is because of that bottom bevel. Your typical table saw will only bevel over to 45 degrees. So with this particular bevel, this angle that it's creating is way more acute than 45 degrees. So anytime that you're needing a tighter bevel than what your table saw can cut, you'll have to run that board through the table saw on its edge. I haven't measured this out exactly to see what that degree is but I'm guessing it's going to be right around 12 to 15 degrees if your material is on edge but really the back thickness of the shelf that's up to you the one thing that you do want to do while running material through on edge especially shorter pieces is to have a sacrificial board behind that that you can actually clamp this to. That way you can feed it through using the longer board. Now this is just a 45 so you'd actually want it a little tighter than that maybe something like this. But whatever bevel that you have ended up with, now we need the spacer between the two boards. And then the easiest way to cut this filler piece on both sides will be to connect your bevel board to your top board. And you can just do that using wood glue and brad nails. And then just turn this over and set it onto a board, place out the inside shape, cut it on a miter saw piece of pie. And the only other thing that you're going to have to do is to determine the length of your bottom board, which that's going to be determined by the bevel that you choose. But again, another super easy way is to take a straight edge, square it up with your top board, and then draw a line where it intersects your bottom board. And the line that is left in the material will be the same angle as your bevel on the opposite side. So if you make that cut, it'll fit flush against the wall. Then as far as installing your spacers, I'll just use some wood glue and brad nails. And to hang this thing, personally, I would just make a French cleat for the back, run it in between my two end spacer boards and then just have that matching side of the cleat that you can mount to the wall and just set this thing down on so don't let all those bevels and angles and things like that throw you off it's all a part of woodworking and once you do a few of them the next time this comes along you won't even sweat it okay so this next one is not really going to be a smaller item so for those of you that are wanting to build some mid-size items that are still easy to build you'll like this one. They are calling this a sapphire bookcase. Why a sapphire bookcase? I have no clue why sapphire has anything to do with this, but 
if you do drop it into the comments because i'm clueless here it's just a cool looking bookcase that is made out of hexagons that happens to be in the trending section which tells me they're selling these babies and they're selling these things for almost 200 bucks a piece so let's go ahead and break this down if i were building this i would start with the hexagon so hexagons are actually super easy to build every angle on a hexagon will be 30 degrees and in this case each one of these are 16 inches wide so that tells me that each one of my sides are eight inches long so for each one of these compartments you're going to need six boards that are eight inches long with a 30 degree miter on each side now as far as the depth of this material honestly that's something that can be up to you how deep do you want your bookshelf in this case it's actually 10 inches deep with the exception of the one hexagon with the contrasting color on the outside it looks like that they used about an inch wider material for that one which I actually really like. I like how they have the contrasting color of the frame to the shelf, but then tied the color of the frame back in with this one hexagon that protrudes just a bit from everything else. Just that one shelf adds dimension to this entire project. But once you get all of your eight inch boards cut, just lay them out on the table, add some wood glue, and then throw in some brad nails or screws. Once you have your five hexagons made, Let's go ahead and attach those to each other. That's all that you'll have to do is lay these things out on a table, and then you can counter bore and screw these things together. So once your shelves are all attached, let's go ahead and make this frame. So if you notice, this frame is actually made out of three different sections that are kind of assembled like a drawer or a box. So just to simplify things on this frame, I'm gonna call these three outside pieces boxes. The top and the bottom, they're identical. The upright in the middle is the one that I would make first. You would just take your three quarter inch material, and it looks like it's about three inches, three and a half. So you could actually buy a one by four and use that. But the insides of these boxes, the part that is actually facing the shelves is the same material that the shelves are made out of. So if these shelves are 10 inches deep, use three quarter by 10 inch material for the tops and bottoms of these boxes or the parts that are facing in. So for this back upright one, you want this one the same as the total height of the three hexagons on the right outside corner. So for the upright box, let's say that your hexagon shelves equal 48 inches tall in total. Let's go ahead and cut our three and a half inch sides and the inside board at 48 inches. Then you could just attach those three inch strips to your 10 inch board, just using a butt joint going all the way down the board. And then your inside tops and bottoms of this vertical box, just measure the distance in between your two three and a half inch boards, cut two pieces to that length, one at the top, one at the bottom, attach those in, and you have the vertical main support of this frame. And then once you have that down, building the top box and the bottom box is pretty much going to be the exact same. The only difference is it's going to be the length. You just measure from the outside of your vertical box all the way to the edge of your last hexagon, and then make two boxes that length. Once you have all three of your boxes assembled, you can just attach all three of these together using screws because all of those will be hidden, and then connect your shelving units to those boxes or the frame using screws from the top and the bottom and that's it it's as simple as that they are wanting two hundred dollars for this thing i'm going to guess that you probably would have maybe 60 bucks in material in this something around in there i haven't actually figured it up but you can actually do this for a lot cheaper if you use plywood on anything that is going to be painted so i'd use natural wood for the outsides and then for our hexagons you can just use some plywood and some edge banding bringing the cost way down regardless of how you decide to make this these things will sell and honestly I think that they're right on with their pricing. A couple of hundred bucks for a nice handmade bookshelf, I'd pay it. Well, I wouldn't pay it, I would build it. But theoretically, if I were to want to buy something, people will pay it. It's not a bad price. All right, so this next one actually came from Home Depot. Typically, I don't find a whole lot of things that I want to break down from the Home Depot, but I had to do this one. Check this out. This is a $116 hanging shelf set from the OHD. Essentially, it is four different size squares with a piece of rope running through it. But I have to give them some credit because these things look pretty neat and they will sell. Now, we're not going to go into great detail on how they made these because you can see how they made these. These are four different sizes, starting with a six inch square, an eight inch square, 10 and 12 inch square, and they are all two and seven eighths of an inch deep. Why two and seven eighths? I'm not sure, but it really doesn't matter as long as it'll hold little knickknacks and pictures and whatever else people want to hang on the wall. They've just put 45 degree miters and used wood glue in each corner. Now, for me to kind of justify a higher price for this, I'd make a quick little spline jig for the table saw on each 45 degree corner through on its edge insert a few splines of contrasting color and spice it up a bit or if you're going for more of a rustic look kind of like this this would be a perfect fence picket or pallet wood project but regardless of how you decide to make your boxes the only other step to do is to drill two holes about an inch in from the end of the tops of each one of these boxes and then that's all that they have done is taken a couple of strands of rope and ran it through those two holes connecting them in the center whatever you decide to sell these things for 
that's up to you. Again, you may have to do some price testing on this, but definitely stage these things up well. With the four different sizes, it almost creates this collage look, kind of what people do with different size picture frames. So while you're staging, make sure to show the different formations that you can make with this. So always keep in mind whenever it comes to marketing that most people cannot visualize something in their space. So you see that a lot of these big box stores now have an app so that you can just take a picture of a space in your house and it will actually put the item in there so that they can visualize that. We don't have the luxury of creating an app like that. So that job is going to fall on you and your staging skills. I hope that you all enjoyed that video and were able to pull some ideas that you're planning on running with. And one thing that I want to mention before I go, if you've made it to the end of this video, but still haven't decided to take the plunge into woodworking, take the plunge. Regardless of your age or the skill level that you think that you're at, you can do this. Just have a little faith in yourself and the possibilities are endless. Wait, don't leave yet. We have to think of a word for the comments. Again, I'm having fun with this because I can tell who made it to the end and who I need to respond to first. So this week's word's going to be woodchuck. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? But you can't say it that fast. So if you decide that you want to leave a comment, just start it out with woodchuck. All right, so with that out of the way, till next time, see ya.